From flying helicopters on Mars to visiting alien worlds in our solar system, NASA has had some incredible achievements throughout its history. This video will be the third and final part to the series recognizing some of these incredible accomplishments. So let's talk about that. This is the final video in a three-part series looking over some of the major accomplishments that NASA has achieved. Now, if you haven't already seen the last two videos, I highly recommend you go and watch those first, as we go year by year looking at one of NASA's greatest accomplishments to happen for that given year. We go all the way from the beginning of NASA in 1958 up into the year 2000, where in this video, we will be going from 2001 all the way up into modern day NASA and seeing what some of the most recent accomplishments have been for the space agency. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started in March of 2001, where Space Shuttle Discovery flew the mission STS-102. Now this mission would be the first rotation on the International Space Station between Expedition 1 and Expedition 2, switching out the three crew members that were on board. Going into the next year, we get into October of 2002, where the Mars Odyssey spacecraft entered its science orbit around Mars. Now, the Mars Odyssey mission is still in operation today, has not only conducted excellent science from orbit around the red planet, but has also played a critical resource for relaying data back from surface missions. Now, speaking of surface missions on Mars, let's jump to July of 2003 where the Mars Exploration Rovers Spirit and Opportunity launched, beginning their voyage to the Red Planet. Now, Spirit and Opportunity are pretty famous in terms of Mars rovers, in that they have uncovered many secrets about the planet, including and improving our understanding of the geology and the minerals that exist on the surface, as well as the past and potential existence of liquid water on Mars. The success of Spirit and Opportunity is one of the major attributions to the current and future exploration of the Red Planet. Now, similar to the last video, if you are familiar with the history of NASA, then you would recognize that in February of 2003, there was another major event. And unfortunately, this was the Columbia disaster. Now, over the next two years or so, NASA would focus on internal reviews, looking at the space shuttle design and thinking about the future of the space shuttle program but that's just something to consider in terms of the overall scope of the space agency. Going into the next year of July of 2004, after a seven year long journey through interplanetary space, the Cassini probe entered orbit around its destination, being the ringed planet Saturn. Now, as of recording this video, Cassini is the only spacecraft to enter orbit around Saturn, therefore making it also the first to do so. But there's also another major component to Cassini, and this is the Huygens probe, or the Huygens module, which actually landed on Saturn's moon Titan, becoming the first object ever to land on a moon in the outer solar system. So really, this entire mission was an incredible achievement for NASA, going to a further location than Jupiter and also landing something on one of the moons of Saturn. So altogether, this was a pretty remarkable project. Going into the next year of July of 2005, Space Shuttle Discovery flew STS-114, which would be the return of flight for the Space Shuttle program after the Columbia disaster. Now, this mission delivered supplies to the International Space Station and evaluated some of the new safety protocols on board the Space Shuttle. Going into March of 2006, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter entered orbit around, you probably guessed it, Mars. Now, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, or also called MRO, has been an incredible resource at the Red Planet. Now, this spacecraft has the largest camera ever sent on a deep space mission, and has been able to map the changing landscape of Mars, exploring the variations in ice, and being able to image spacecraft on the surface of the planet. MRO has also acted as an incredible communication satellite for surface missions, such as rovers and landers for NASA. In September of 2007, the Dawn spacecraft was launched. Now, Dawn visited two large objects in the asteroid belt, Vesta and Ceres. Dawn not only became the first spacecraft to visit either of these worlds, but also became the first spacecraft to orbit two extraterrestrial bodies. It was also the first spacecraft to orbit a dwarf planet. So this mission was pretty remarkable altogether. 
Going into May of 2008, the Phoenix mission successfully landed on the surface of Mars. Now this lander is the first mission to send data back from either of the poles on the red planet and has been able to teach us a lot more about the weather patterns that exist on Mars, telling us more about some of the seasonal changes that exist, the fact that it actually snows on Mars, and even teaching us a little bit about the surface chemistry and what might be a challenge in terms of finding ancient life on the red planet. In May of 2009, Space Shuttle Discovery would fly mission STS-125, being the last Hubble servicing mission. Now, the mission itself included seven astronauts on board, and over the course of nearly two weeks, there would be five EVAs, totaling in 36 hours of spacewalk across the crew, which is a very long time. Now, the upgrades that would be made to the Hubble Space Telescope would allow the mission to be extended until 2024. In December of 2010, I've included a slightly different accomplishment, but is still showcasing some of the variation in NASA as a whole. And this is going into NASA's commercial resupply contract, where they would oversee some of the first demo flight tests of SpaceX's Cargo Dragon. Now, although the vehicle is SpaceX's vehicle, this would start to mark the pivot from using the space shuttle to send cargo to the ISS to having private companies perform such tasks. In July of 2011, Space Shuttle Atlantis would fly STS-135, the final mission of the Space Shuttle program. The mission had a crew of four astronauts and brought supplies to the International Space Station. Before undocking from the ISS, the crew left a small American flag that was originally flown on STS-1, or the first Space Shuttle launch. The flag was planned to be brought back to Earth by the next crew to be launched from the United States. Going into August of 2012, the Curiosity rover successfully landed on the surface of Mars. Now, at the time, Curiosity would be the largest vehicle to land on the Red Planet. Now, building upon the success of the Mars exploration rovers, Curiosity had state-of-the-art instrumentation to explore the geology of Mars in more detail and understand the history of Gale Crater, or the location in which it landed. In March of 2013, NASA announced that the Voyager 1 probe had met a major milestone. Now, the spacecraft had noticed that there was a change in some of the plasma measurements on board, and they came to the conclusion that this meant that the spacecraft had entered interstellar space. Now, although this claim is arguable, Voyager 1 continues to travel away from Earth, and as of 2021, Voyager 1 is over 22 billion kilometers away from Earth. In December of 2014, NASA conducted Exploration Flight Test 1 for the Orion capsule. Now, the Orion capsule, if you aren't familiar, is the next capsule that will be sending astronauts to orbit around the moon. So this was a major test for what would now become the name of the program Artemis. So in all, Exploration Flight Test 1 only lasted four hours, but would test many of the different systems on board the capsule, or on board Orion, including the re-entry heat shield, the parachutes, as well as what would actually happen when the astronauts were in space. And this test was a major success for the program. Now, in July of 2015, the New Horizons spacecraft flew by the planet Pluto. Now, just to put this into perspective, before the flyby of New Horizons, this was the best picture we had of Pluto. And this was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope, so this really was the best that we had. But as New Horizons traveled closer and closer to Pluto, it would take better and better images that we basically ever seen of the planet, and eventually leading to the best images that we have to date, as represented here. Now, New Horizons was also able to image Pluto's largest moon, being Charon. So altogether, New Horizons taught us so much about Pluto and Charon, and essentially what it's like when we are this far away from the sun. In July of 2016, the Juno spacecraft entered orbit around the gas giant Jupiter, becoming the second spacecraft to ever to orbit Jupiter. And you might remember from the last video what the first one was, but if you haven't seen that video, I'm not gonna spoil it for you, so you can go and check that out. Nonetheless, the Juno mission studied the gas giant as a whole, trying to understand its interior structure, what causes the strong magnetic field in the Jovian system, and the gravitational environment that exists there. 
trying to understand how Jupiter may have formed and the complex environment in which it exists. In February of 2017, NASA announced some major discoveries around the TRAPPIST-1 system. Using the Spitzer Space Telescope, they were able to discover seven terrestrial planets orbiting a star. Now this is a different stellar system or a different solar system to our own. And essentially, they discovered that five of these seven planets that are orbiting this star are a similar size to that of Earth. Now this was a major step or a major announcement for the exploration of exoplanets or planets outside of our solar system. Recognizing that Earth-like planets or those that are similar in size to Earth might not be as rare as we think that they are. Now going into December of 2018, the OSIRIS-REx mission arrived at the asteroid Bennu. Now OSIRIS-REx spent over two years at the asteroid examining the surface from orbit and eventually touching down on the surface to collect a rock sample. And in May of 2021, the mission left the asteroid and has been on its way for the two-year return back to Earth. Now once OSIRIS-REx returns and if the sample collection is successful, this will be NASA's first sample return mission from an asteroid. Going into January of 2019, the New Horizon spacecraft, which was the same one that flew by Pluto just a few years prior, was about to fly by another object, something called a trans-Neptunian object or something in the Kuiper belt. And this object is called Erokoth. Now this object essentially is like that of an asteroid or a small planetesimal, essentially telling us about what some of the objects would be used to form larger planets. Now something that is really impressive about this mission is that Erikoth was discovered in 2014, eight years after the launch of New Horizons. This mission has taught us a lot about the environment that exists out beyond Neptune. In May of 2020, or last year at the time that this video is being released, a major accomplishment for NASA was through the Commercial Crew Program, where SpaceX flew the Demo-2 mission, sending two astronauts to the International Space Station to test the Crew Dragon capsule. Now this is a major success because this was the United States return to launching astronauts from American soil on American rockets after nine years since the space shuttle program had ended. Now this was a major success, and as I mentioned before, when STS-135 launched in 2011, they brought that American flag to the International Space Station. So when Demo-2 left later that year, or last year in 2020, it too brought that American flag back to the United States. Again, marking a major achievement for NASA in the commercial crew program. So now we made it into 2021. Now it's important to note that this year is far from over. There's a lot of very notable launches that are still scheduled to launch in 2021. And if James Webb Space Telescope or Artemis 1 happen, then those will probably take the biggest accomplishment for the year. But as of filming this video so far in September of 2021, I would say the biggest accomplishment so far has been the flight of Ingenuity or the helicopter on Mars. This being the first powered flight to occur on another planet, being a major accomplishment for NASA. And even going back into the Mars 2020 mission or the history of what was supposed to happen, the Ingenuity helicopter really didn't come into the design up until three or four years ago. So it's pretty impressive that over this time frame they were able to develop such a design to fly in such a low atmosphere or a very difficult region to work with. And so far it's shown incredible success. So, like I said, 2021 isn't over yet, but so far I would say the Ingenuity helicopter is probably one of the largest successes, alongside landing the Perseverance rover on Mars and the incredible footage we got from that landing sequence. But again, there is still quite a bit of time left in this year, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens. So that's it. That's the end of this three-part series, going all the way from 1958 with the very beginning of NASA in that first video, all the way to 2021. And in each one of these videos, we see the evolution of NASA, whether it be in the first video where we saw the development of the Apollo program, landing astronauts on the surface of the moon, and eventually getting to the Apollo Soyuz program where we have this international collaboration. In the second video where we see the development of the space shuttle, the incredible use as a vehicle that sends not only payloads, but also crew to space 
and also the implementation of the International Space Station. And most recently in this video, where not only do we see the development of the space station, the use and the end of the space shuttle program, but also some of the incredible destinations that NASA has been able to send robotic missions to understand more about the scientific exploration of the program as a whole. But there's another major component, and this is the privatization of space. Things such as the cargo missions that come through SpaceX or the Cygnus rocket, as well as the commercial crew program, which has just recently started last year. We're seeing this evolution much like we saw in some of the past videos, the gradual change from year to year where major achievements become known because of ideas that happened maybe a decade or so prior. So it's fascinating to see how exactly the agency has changed throughout this time frame. Now with all that being said, and I think I mentioned this at the end of every video, if you think in one of these years there's an event that maybe should be replaced, maybe there is something, for example, in 2010 that you think would maybe be more important than what I included here, let me know in the comments below. Because again, each one of these years is just what I thought was a pretty big milestone. And trust me, there is a lot more that NASA does than what I've mentioned here. Also, if you have any questions about any of the missions that I've talked about, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you all are thinking. But if you enjoyed this series, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. And again, if you have any questions, let me know below. But with all that being said, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.